Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about one of the important topic in system physiology about endocrine system. No, about endocrine system. Means here, yeah, endo means inner. Crying means away. What exactly the interpretation of the word endocrine? Here it shows its activity away from the production side or source. I will tell you what exactly it means. You know, in our previous classes we have discussed at length about you know, coordination. That means different physiological processes. Here our all physiological processes or systems will take place in a coordinated and regulated manner. Why? To achieve homeostasis. Who will undertake this homeostatic? That means coordinated role. Here there are two particular systems, the neural system and the endocrine system. The distinguishing between the two is the neural system is often rapid and short-lived, whereas endocrine system is persistent in approach. For example, growth hormone. We grow gradually, not just all of a sudden. That means there is an arithmetic growth but not exponential growth. That means the distinguishing between the two, between the two is the mode of activity. Neural system is rapid and short-lived, whereas endocrine system is persistent in approach. It was said that both these, that means neural and endocrine systems, they evolve together. Why? What makes them to evolve together are because there is certain kind of complexity in the organ grade of system. Say for example, mammals, we have a very complex organized network. We knew that tissue system, organ and organ, organism like that, you know. So to meet the ends and to attain homeostasis in a much complex environment, there is a requirement of a typical coordinated systems here, neural and endocrine. And why there is a requirement of endocrine? Why can't only one system? Because neural system say the neurons can, that means the nerve fibers cannot innervate each and every cell. That means nerve and, uh, uh, it, it's like nerve ending touching the particular point. They cannot, uh, they won't touch each and every point or corner of the cell because we have three trillions of cells. So, to, visit, to fill this gap, there is a requirement of the evolution of another effective typical system, that means specialized system, what we call endocrine system. Because they secrete small biomolecules in tiny amounts called hormones. That means the endocrine system, just like the nephrons to an excretory system, hormones to the endocrine system. And these hormones, they reach every cell and they regulate their physiological activity. Either they accelerate or, or, or inhibit. That means, depending on the kind of activity, the hormones will perform. So, it's about the broad overview of endocrine system, you know. The major activity of endocrine system is persistent action. Persistent, slow action. You know. What well, hormone, I would have to say hormone. The word hormone means exact, gone by starling, you know. The word hormone means excite, simply excite, formed by starling. And secretin is the first hormone to get detected. The first hormone. You know, we have discussed that hormones are the basic pillars for endocrine system. And for better understanding, we have to understand certain chief characteristic features of hormones. Hormones are non-nutrient chemicals that are intercellular messengers released in trace amounts and effective, that means effective in trace amounts and they are short-lived. The most important features of hormones are, they are non-nutrient, non-nutrient chemicals. They are intercellular messengers, intercellular messengers. They are effective in trace amounts, they are effective in trace amounts. They are short lived, they are short lived. The most important features of hormones, you know, non-nutrient, the intercellular messengers, the affect the trace amounts and short lived. You know, they get degraded by different tissues and they get excreted in the way of bile and urine. That means bile through liver and urine through kidney. 
so it's about the basic issues of harmonies and depending on the kind of you know we have discussed already just the harmony is a basic pillar and what constitute endocrine system broadly the world in that endocrine glands and different diffuse the tissues and cells which secrete hormones constitute endocrine system and depending on the kind of the chemical nature of hormone there are three, three different kinds like amine hormones then peptide and protein hormones and steroid hormones amine hormones the word implies they are derivatives of a single amino acid for example cat call amine say epinephrine non epinephrine thyroxine they are the derivatives of tyrosine amino acid the same term melatonin they are, they are the derivative of tryptophan then peptide and protein hormone the word it implies here depending on the length of the amino acid that is polymer say for example if it between 3 to 49 amino acids they are considered as peptide hormones say oxytocin and dietetic hormone that means posterior pituitary or neuro hypophysis of pituitary then protein hormones if the number of amino acids between 50 to 200 say adeno hypophysis say acth adeno corticotropic hormone thyroid stimulating hormone like that then steroid hormones they are the derivatives of cholesterol say for example aldosterone for example you know estrogen progesterone testosterone they are different typical examples and the most you know prostaglandin the well studied steroid hormones they are the, they are the derivatives of eco eicosanoid the thing is majorly that means the steroid hormones are majorly that derivatives of essential fatty acids say for example omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids okay depending on the kind of uh, chemical nature we have discussed amine hormones peptide and protein hormones and steroid hormones you know hormones depending on the nature amine amine hormones peptide and proteins then steroid hormones the amine hormone for example you know say for example tyrosine tryptophan tryptophan the tyrosine you know for example you know cat call amines cat call amines what are cat call amines we have discussed already epinephrine not epinephrine not epinephrine then thyroxine then melatonin derivative of tryptophan these are the kind of uh, you know amine hormones that it is amino acid the kind of amino acid peptide and protein hormone the peptide say for example you know between 3 to 49 peptide amino acid for example you know oxytocin adh then protein hormones so between 50 to 200 amino acids say acth tsh and steroid hormones for example you know the day the derivatives of cholesterol cholesterol say for example you know aldosterone estrogen progesterone testosterone so these are different you know depending on the chemical nature hormones are broadly categorized like this you know amine hormones the derivatives of single amino acid like you know tyrosine in that means the say tyrosine is amino acid the derivatives of tyrosine or cat call amine say epinephrine or epinephrine and thyroxine tryptophan as another amino acid the melatonin peptide and protein say for example if it is a between 3 to 49 amino acid that means polymer it's got peptide say oxytocin and adh in protein hormones if the length of the polymer chain is between 50 to 200 they are called protein amino acid the protein hormones acth and tsh for example adeno corticotropic hormone and tsh we will discuss okay then steroid hormones that is derivatives of cholesterol the word it implies then aldosterone estrogen progesterone testosterone apart from this the well studied uh, steroid hormone you know prostaglandins they are the derivatives of eicosanoids that means these are the, they, depending on the chemical nature there are all we have, these are different kinds and we have discussed in our previous classes the hormonal action mechanism say so the steroid hormones for example they undergo directly they they directly enter into the cell whereas protein hormones they uh, they attach to a receptor to secondary messenger system say cyclic amp they perform their task that means because peptide and protein hormones they cannot penetrate then they are what called impermeability 
for steroid hormone because the plus because of phospholipid bilayer nation na they get directly enter their receptors are in, in the nuclear receptors okay like that. so depending on the kind of uh, 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 by nature their action hormonal action also depends okay then next coming to the important topic hypothalamus now for convenience we will discuss endocrine system to different parts okay first the hypothalamus We all discussed in particularly in animals like mammals the complexity of organ system grade of that means organ system grade of organization is very high. To to get coordination that means to attain homeostasis there is a requirement of much specialized system called endocrine system. Whereas in case of lower animals say higher invertebrates there is a simple endocrine system that means higher the complexity higher the re evolution requirement of a specialized system like endocrine system. Okay here. Hypothalamus, the word in but hypothalamus, they are present below the thalamus, which constitute the floor of the diencephalon, which is nothing but the part of the forebrain or prosencephalon. You know? Hypothalamus. But why, 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 before we go into the topic, that means main endocrine glands like pituitary, adrenal, and others, thyroid, and others, we have to start with hypothalamus. Why? Because hypothalamus is the master control system. You know, master controller, simply called. Master controller. What exactly the master controller? Say, imagine there is the head of the department. Imagine there is a principal. The head of the department will control the rest of the faculty. Whereas the principal will control the head. Here the head is the master. And there is someone who will control the master. Here the hypothalamus is the master controller. And who is the head? Here the pituitary gland is the head. This is the master gland of the body. Now, here, master gland, but is since it controls the master, it is called a master controller. How it controls, you know, hypothalamus, in, we have discussed already, it is about the floor of the diencephalon. You can see the floor of the diencephalon and two different hormones, like releasing hormones, that means inhibitory hormones. There are two different kinds of hormones because they are secreted by neurosecretory cells called nuclei. You know, the most important feature is hypothalamus, they, 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 they secrete different hormones. Neuro called neural hormones and depending on the kind of activity, they are two two ways you know for example you know say uh, releasing hormones and to inhibitory hormones say growth hormone releasing hormone say stomatocrinine growth hormone inhibitory hormone say stomatostatin say growth hormone is stomatotropin sth and this growth hormone will be released by the anterior pituitary what we know hypothesis if there is a requirement of growth hormone the hypothalamus will release releasing hormone that means growth hormone releasing hormone gh or that's what we call stomatocrinine it will stimulate the synthesis and production of growth hormone from the adrenal hypothesis. Plus, if there is no requirement of growth hormone, then it releases growth hormone, inhibitory hormone, what we call GHIH, otherwise called somatostatin. And this somatostatin will come and it inhibit the synthesis of growth hormone from the adrenal hypothesis. Since it controls the master gland, it is called hypo, that means master controller. It is very important, you know. So, depending on the kind of activity, there are two kinds of hormones, you know. So, yeah, releasing hormones. Releasing hormones, then inhibitory hormones, inhibitory hormones, say releasing hormone, for example, growth hormone, releasing hormone, what we call somatostatin, somato, sorry, somatocrinine, crinine, whereas inhibitory hormone, what we call growth hormone, inhibitory hormone, otherwise called Somatostatin. Somatostatin. Here, they act, that means both they in effect somatotropin. Somatotropin. That means growth hormone. Here, somatocrinin, it release, that means it see, initiate the synthesis. But as somatostatin inhibits the synthesis of growth hormone, that, 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 that is why it is considered as. Growth hormone inhibiting hormone, GH, growth hormone inhibiting hormone, somatostatin, somatocrinine, growth hormone releasing hormone. So, depending on the kind of activity they will release. And they both affect somatotropin, which is a growth hormone. So let us you know, here the word, there is a typical word, you know, tropin. We should not get confused with tropin. Tropin, T R O P A N. What exactly tropin? Here, we have discussed endocrine, it shows its activity away from the production point. 
trophy means it shows its activity on other endocrine glands other endocrine glands i have to discuss now already say tropin somatotropin say for example you know here the hypothalamus hypothalamus will affect the anterior pituitary that means the hormones released by the hypothalamus are tropin hormones why because the tropin hormone released from the hypothalamus affect the other endocrine gland called pituitary so th thyroid stimulating hormone tsh from the adrenal hypophysis affect the thyroid that means thyroid gland is another endocrine gland and adrenal hypophysis which is the part of the ant pituitary gland that means hypophysis affects the thyroid through thyroid stimulating hormone tsh what we call thyroid tropin since it affects the other endocrine gland the, the word is called tropin other way other is other word called tropin tropin means it exact like growth growth say hyperplasia hypertrophic no growth effect simply called growth effect say the thyroid stimulating hormone excess thyroid stimulating hormone on the thyroid leads to goiter so a growth effect then you should not get confused on tropin and trophy okay let, let us take a, let's take a, a rough sketch of uh, how the hypothalamus control say that this will hypothalamus and this is the pituitary say this is hypothalamus this is hypothalamus so we'll discuss on new different neurosecretory cells say here Another one. Actually, I told you already, no? it controls pituitary, but there are two parts of pituitary gland. We'll discuss how each control in different way. This is called adenohypophysis. The entire one is called hypophysis, pituitary, hypophysis. That is called pituitary adenohypophysis. So neurohypophysis. Neurohypophysis. Adenohypophysis means majorly it is called parts distalis. That is neurohypophysis is called parts nervosa. And between two there is a parts intermedia and the thing is hypothalamus that means the neurosecretory cells neuro secretory cells that it is different hormone like releasing hormones inhibitory hormone depending okay how they reach the adrenal hypophysis it is in different it is infundibulum infundibulum this is a pituitary attached to the hypothalamus by the infundibulum. The thing is, pituitary again have different three different structures: adrenal hypophysis, the anterior part, the neural hypophysis, the posterior part, and the pass intermediate, the zone between the two. The major lobe, that means occupying lobe of adrenal hypophysis, is pass distalis. In case of neural hypophysis, is pass nervosa. Okay, the same technical names. The thing is, hypothalamus connects to neural hypophysis directly. Direct, what we call hypothalamic direct neural regulation on that means with respect to neurohypophysis what we call hypothalamo hypothalamo hypophysial tract hypothalamo hypophysial tract that means it's a neural tract here the thing is the hormones they transport from the hypothalamus the transport they transfer through the neural hypophysis through the axon itself there is no blood vessel this is very important that means direct neural con direct neural connection see it implies that the neural hypophysis stores and release but synthesis of posterior hypophysis that means posterior pituitary gland what we call neural hypophysis is not exactly by them since it's by the hypothalamus itself that the neural circuitry cells but it just stores in the neural hypophysis just awaiting for an impulse. Just it's like you know, if there is an impulse from the neural hypophysis, then they will release. This is very important. Then, in with respect to adenal hypophysis, it's not like that. There is a portal system, there is a blood connection between the hypothalamus 
and the head is the hypophysis okay and they will release accordingly this is called hypothalamo hypothalamo hypophysial hypophysial portal system this is very important the anterior the adenoid hypophysis connects to the hypothalamus by hypothalamo hypophysial portal system but as a posterior part connects to the hypothalamus by the hypothalamo hypophysial tract the, the direct neural regulation okay we will we'll discuss how different hormones release from this but it is anatomical features and there are different lobes in posterior in you know, no, uh, pituitary gland we will discuss now master control how so by this processes they will control the pituitary so that is why hypothalamus is actually considered as a master controller okay. let us discuss about the pituitary gland okay there are different structures okay then pituitary gland we have discussed already it is a master gland pituitary gland this is called hypophysis the adeno hypophysis adeno hypophysis the neuro hypophysis neuro hypophysis called parts nervosa parts nervosa called parts distalis parts distalis and junction between the two parts intermedia parts intermedia is there in the hypophysis set we will discuss now protein hormones the neural hypophysis circuits peptide hormones say there in the hypophysis for example you know growth hormone then luteotropic hormone lth then thyroid stimulating hormone then adrenocorticotropic hormone then follicle stimulating hormone then luteinizing hormone the pars intermedia will release molecule melanocyte stimulating hormones the neurohypophysis will release the circuit oxytocin and antidiuretic hormones these are important that means they each part have different hormones say first add in the hypophysis the growth hormone you know somatotropin somatotropin There are different cells responsible for the release. We unlike neurohypophysis, there is no hypophysis. Directly, the the neurotransmitter cells of hypothalamus they synthesize. Just they are just emitting a signal. That's it. But here, adenohypophysis they require certain cells. Say, somatotrophs, somatotrophs. The kind of cell, specialized cell that synthesizes growth hormone, somatotropin. Luteotrophs, na, lactotrophs. That means luteotropic hormone, or if you call lactogenic hormone, or if you call prolactin, prolactin. This is said by lactotropes. Thyroid stimulating hormone, thyrotropes. What is ACTH? Corticotropes. What is FSH and LH? Gonadotropes. different cells there are specialized cells that synthesize different hormones say growth hormone we have discussed the word in the growth hormone it promotes that means the that means excite stimulate overall growth of the body how by protein synthesis by cell division for example you know, cell differentiation and they say epiphyseal plates it leads to you know, cell division epiphyseal plates leads to bone elongation major it acts on liver to synthesize insulin like growth factors insulin like growth factor insulin like growth factors growth hormone the stimulate the synthesis of insulin like growth hormone factors in liver then you know, cell division well, how would we grow because of cell you know cell divisions and you know, the I mean, protein uh, protein synthesis cell division and cell differentiation that's it then gets a bone elongation by cell division in epiphyseal plates that leads to bone elongation is the activity of growth hormone the luteotropic hormone the world in blood production then is lactogenic hormone it stimulates the enlargement of breast in females you know how that means it do through this activity it also prepares for the synthesis of milk 
this synthesis of milk because oxytocin will take care of the ejection but synthesis and enlargement of mammary gland is in phase of females done by luteotropic hormone and yes yeah, and, and 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 most important thing is and this luteotropic hormone also maintains the corpus luteum which, which is important for pregnancy okay then thyroid stimulating hormone the what we call thyrotropin how and then their activity seems to work they directly affect thyroid gland to synthesize thyroxine this is very important okay adrenocorticotropin hormone acth corticotropin so simply somatotropin thyrotropin corticotropin corticotropin they stimulate the adrenal cortex to synthesize glucocorticoid that means which are essential hormone for carbohydrate metabolism Follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone, the word implied, they stimulate the they stimulate the production of you know for ovarian follicles in case of female. And spermatogenesis in case of males, along with androgen hormone. And case of luteinizing hormone, you know, they otherwise called interstitial cell stimulating hormone because they stimulate the interstitial cells of lyric, lyric cells in case of male, certain testes. Lyric cells so have to synthesize androgen. The principal androgen is the testosterone. In case of females, it synthesizes the ovary to synthesize, you know, it stimulates the ovary to synthesize estrogen and progesterone. And luteinizing hormone is also responsible for ovulation. It also responsible for the formation of corpus luteum, you know. Corpus luteum. How it form car how it maintains corpus luteum? It, you know, the remnant of graphene follicles converts into a, a, a temporary endocrine gland. By what called carpus luteum, and this will take the task will done by luteinizing hormone LH. And this carpus luteum is responsible for the maintenance of pregnancy because it releases progesterone. That's the connection. Okay, that means ovulation and carpus luteum formation by pregnancy by in case of females, in case of males, to release of testosterone. That means synthesize, that means stimulates the leadic cell, that means interstitial cells of leadic in testes to stimulate to and to synthesize you know, uh, testosterone. That means. Androgen is the, the principal. Uh, yeah, the principal androgen is the testosterone. That's how different active hormones of ACT means adrenal hypothalamus. Plus, in parts intermedia, melanocyte stimulating hormone. It doesn't have much significance, but just you know, it leads to deposition of melanin, darkening of hair. That's it. In case of neural hypothalamus, you know, oxytocin is very important. You know, oxytocin is like it. It affects it on smooth muscles. Contraction of smooth muscles. Contraction. Of smooth muscles, contraction of smooth muscles. Say, so, say, so particularly you now during childbirth, its role is indispensable. That means facilitate oxytocin, what we call love hormone. It facilitates the childbirth. At the same time, it also has a role in the ejection of milk. Ejection of milk from the mammary glands, the mammary duct, is by means of is to oxytocin. Here, prolactin synthesizes the milk, but the ejection of that means from um, uh, out of ma mammary duct is, is by means of Oxytocin hormone and antidiuretic hormone. Why it is called antidiuretic hormone? We have discussed when we do, when we'll discuss about urine formation. You know, diuresis, excess sec excretion of urine. But for diuresis, this has to get prevented because because it leads to loss of water. For that, urine become hypertonic. How urine become hypertonic? Because here antidiuretic hormone they stimulate the you know diastole convertible DCT, DCT, and the collecting duct. So as to reabsorb the water and electrolytes, reabsorption of water and electrolytes by the dextrocanular tubules and the collecting ducts under the stimulation of antidiuretic hormone leads to the secretion of uh, the excretion of uh, uh, no hypertonic urine so as to prevent diuresis. That is the connection. So it's uh, both the neurohypers, so oxytocin and ADH, they are peptide hormones, whereas uh, a growth hormone, LTH, means lutotropic hormone, prolactin, thyroid hormone, ACTH, FSH, LHS, they are all. Until which there are protein hormones, okay. Melanocytes limiting hormone are past intermedia. That is how that, that, that is why the pituitary gland is a master gland because it controls the rest of the gland by two to the different respective hormones, and it is occurring under the influence of hypothalamus by respect to say releasing and inhibitory hormones. So releasing hormones somatocrylin, which releases the, the growth hormone, but as somatostatin, which inhibits the growth hormone. Okay, it's about hypothalamus and pituitary gland connection. In next class, we'll discuss the remaining gland. Thanks for watching.